board members sitting at the table. Just a clarification around the role of community boards at the moment, because they haven't been sworn in yet. They don't yet have speaking rights at the council table. However, I have, I've informed them that if they have any um, comments on the agenda today, that can be done during public speaking time. Welcome to our Chief Executive, Darren Edwards, and to other council staff, Democracy Services, supporting this meeting today, and to our member of the public who's turned up today. <laughs> You're welcome, Keith. So um, I will now invite our councillor, Shelley Warwick, to read the council blessing. Okay, my, my pauses in this might not be so good, but I'll give it a go. Ia mato e whiriwhiriana i nga taki ki mua, i o mato aro aro, i pono ana mato ka kaha, tonu ki te whakapo, mahara, huapai mō ngā hapuri i mahi nei mato, me kaha, me kaha hoki mato, katoa ki a whaihua, ki a tōtika, Ta mato mahi, a ma ki maya, te tiro whakamaua me te hihiri, ka ta ia te arahi i roto i te kō haki, ko tahitanga me te, me te aroha. Do you want me to read the no, that, That's all good. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor Warwick. So um, the next item on the agenda is a declaration by member elected as councillor. And just to head up that after that's happened, I'll invite uh, Deputy Mayor Lawrence Kirby to say a few words. Um, he didn't have the opportunity at the inauguration, so I'd like to give him that opportunity today. But first of all, we'll have um, our declaration from Councillor Coe, who couldn't be there at the inauguration ceremony. So I'll invite her to do that. Yes, please. Oh, maybe... Maybe come up here. Difficult to stand, that's good. I, Elizabeth Ann Coe, declare that I will faithfully and impartially, and according to the best of my skill and judgment, execute and perform in the best interests of the Kapiti Coast District the powers, authorities and duties vested in or imposed upon me as a member of the Kapiti Coast District Council by virtue of the Local Government Act 2002, the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act 1987 or any other act. Thank you very much. There, there might be an opportunity for a photo in the break. <laughs> so I'll now invite um, our new Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Lawrence Kirby, to say a few words. Kia ora koutou, everyone. Um, thank you, Mayor Janet, uh, for this opportunity to speak this morning. Actually, do you want to come up here? So that sure. I'd like to bring my notes as well. Yeah, if you like. It's just then we can see you on the live stream a bit better. Firstly, I want to um, just take the opportunity to uh, to make some thank yous. Uh, firstly, to Mia Janet for the opportunity and the trust that you're putting in me uh, in appointing me to this role um, and also to my colleagues that sit around uh, this table, my fellow councillors. Um, thank you also for your support um, as I step into this role and please bear with me because uh, as you're all very aware, uh, politics and local government is new to me so uh, we're going to have some fun over this training as uh, I learn and as we learn together uh, through this process. Um, Thanks to all of those. I just want to acknowledge all of those who have also stood across our rohi in the elections, uh, some of whom, or a lot of whom, weren't elected uh, and who aren't at this table. But 
Uh, I think democracy is strong in terms of people willing to stand and put themselves out there um, by the number who stood in this election. So I just want to acknowledge, uh, acknowledge them. And I'm hoping that some time through the training we might be able to use some of their skills and some of their expertise that they showed us on the uh, election trail um, to continue to help us as we move forward as a council and a district. Um, also a special uh, thanks to uh, my personal supporters and the biggest thank pro thanks probably goes to my wife and my family um, who when I first talked about doing this uh, my wife was she swallowed very Ooh. Uh, but has stood by me and supported me through this and so I really want to acknowledge them. Uh, one thing I'm very conscious about as we sit here in this chamber as newly elected members is that we have a diverse community that we have declared we will act in the best interests of. We've talked often about the voice of the community that we heard during the electoral process yet only 49% of our eligible people voted which is about 20,000 people in our district and of which I only heard from, and I use inverted commas around the words heard from, generously speaking, maybe 5% of those. I guess I'm even more conscious that because my election promise was, and you could probably quote this with me, I will listen, I will learn and I will lead. I think one of my biggest challenges and our biggest challenge we face as a district and as a country is how we re-engage with our communities so we can effectively hear their voices. How we progress the health and effectiveness of our partnership with mana whenua and tangata whenua is important to me. Working to address the many complex issues we face within the social and spiritual fabric of our community and so and by doing so increasing the health and well-being of our most vulnerable communities is a priority to me. These sit along the broader desire to continue to build kapiti as the best place to live, work and play. Our mayor in her inauguration speech spoke about the spirit of kotahitanga and whanaunatanga being something that she was aiming for with this new council and to build that with our community. I've had the privilege of traveling into a few developing countries over my life and after those visits on my return to Aotearoa, I am sensitized to how blessed we are to live here. Sure, we have problems, but they pale into insignificance in comparison to what I had experienced overseas. I hope that as a district, we continue to be grateful for what we have to celebrate the beauty, the splendor and the privilege of our lives while we work together to continue to improve things. I see my role as Deputy Mayor over, over and above my commitment to serve the district is to serve and support the Mayor and you, my fellow councillors, as we move forward together this triennium. Thank you again for your trust and your support. That is not taken for granted. This is a new council. We have fresh opinions, fresh optimism, fresh ideas, and so with the many challenges and opportunities that are coming our way, let's start by leading our community in doing what we do well. Coming together, supporting each other, championing the good and continuing to work walk together as we build a to a toy to te whanau, whan, sorry I'm going to say this again a <clears throat> toy to te whenua toy to te wai toy to te tangata toy to kapiti a thriving environment a vibrant economy and strong communities norera tenakoto 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 kato thank you Kia ora. Kia ora, Councillor Kirby. They are absolutely wonderful words and I look forward to working with you for the next three years. So we'll, we'll take that as the first public speaking time for items relating to the agenda. So we've kind of skipped forward to item eight, just to tidy up that position, <laughs> the position of that speech. So um, we have uh, no other public speakers, I believe, who are speaking to items on the agenda. And just to clarify, our public speaking time at the start of the meetings is for item on, items on the agenda, and uh, those that want to speak on other items, uh, that public speaking time is at the end of the agenda. 
Um, we will allow other opportunities before meetings in public forum um, on a case-by-case -case basis through the triennium for people to come in and speak before the council meeting. So um, I'll move on now to item four, which is apologies. Do I have any apologies? No apologies today. I will note that Councillor Hanford isn't at the table but is attending via Zoom. Uh, do I have any declarations of interest relating to items on the agenda? There being none, uh, item six is not relevant today. Item seven, not relevant. We've already covered item eight, which is public speaking time. So item nine, members' business. So we have no public speaking time responses. Do I have any requests for a leave of absence? There being none. Matters of an urgent nature, none have been drawn to my attention. Uh, we'll leave the Mayor's report for this time, <laughs> as I gave a little speech at our last meeting. And so we move on to item 11, which is reports. And the first item under reports is the explanation of legislation for new elected members. Chief Executive. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I'll take this report as being read. This is a follow on from the inauguration uh, and, and is a matter for a really of, of administration um, for Councillor. So I uh, take this as read. Uh, I'll simply point out that there are a number of pieces of legislation that we are statutory, uh, statutorily obligated to. Are those, and I'll just quickly read out for you, those include the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act, <coughs> Local Authorities Members Interest Act, um, Crimes Act, uh, Secret Commissions Act, Financial Markets Conduct Act, and also Health Safety uh, at Work, Local Government Act, Public Records Act, uh, protected Disclosure, Whistleblowers Act, and of course the Privacy Act. Happy to take any questions if there are. Do you have any questions? No questions. Do we need to move and second again the adoption of those? Can I have a mover please? Councillor Wilson, seconded Councillor Warwick. Any debate? All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? That's carried. So we now move on to 11.2, draft calendar of meetings for the end of 2022. I'll welcome Steffi Hayfell. Okay, um, through you, Madam Chair. I take this report largely as read. It is a um, report for you to adopt a calendar of meetings until the end of the year. Um, another report will come to Council for next year once um, the governance structure has been confirmed. So it is also a matter of administration. It's not actually legally required, but it's good practice so we can publicise the meeting dates and times. Um, and as per last triennium, for now, it is up to you to make that decision, but the meeting times have been set for Thursday at 9.30 a.m., so there would have to be a discussion um, around whether that's what you would want going forward. Yes, any questions? Yes, Councillor Wilson. You need to turn on your microphone, please, for the live stream. Sorry, how's that? Uh, it's not a question as such, so it's, a, it's a comment. So, um, oh, that can wait till debate then. Yeah. Do you have any questions on the paper? Well, Councillor Halliday. Uh, through you, uh, Your Worship. Um, look, just wanted to clarify, um, you, you, pretty much all, if, if I'm reading this correctly, we're looking at a similar, it's more from a public um, perspective, um, we're looking at fairly uh, similar, similar meeting times um, per se as the last triennium, is that right? Yes, in and this draft calendar. Okay, that's cool. And uh, you mentioned the, um, from an ongoing uh, perspective, the um, forums. Um, will they? You, you talked about those potentially being on a um, 
when required basis as such? Are we looking at programming anything in as such? or is that Yeah, that, that's my suggestion at this point, but um, we can discuss that as councillors, how we'd like to progress with that. Lovely. Thank you very much. So, any other questions? So I'm looking for a mover for... Happy to move that, Madam Chair. 3A and B on page 22. So that's moved by Councillor Halliday. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kirby. Debate. Councillor Wilson. Yep, it's not actually a debate, it's just a point. It may become a debate. Um, <coughs> going to uh, point 10, the times of council meetings, I would like us to be considering having council meetings in the evening. Um, for people who um, haven't been around the council table for a long time, uh, they may not realise that uh, traditionally Kapiti Coast council meetings were held at night time. Um, for the longest time, actually. It's relatively recent that they are day meetings. So there are a lot of good reasons for that. We don't need to traverse those now. I'm just putting this out there as a suggestion. It possibly makes sense that we run with this um, you know, through the Christmas break. But I would really like us to have a serious consideration about night meetings. There's, you can make a really substantial case for it, and I'm happy to draw one up uh, for people to consider. Um, and as point 13 points out, you know, it's up to council and community boards to set their own dates and times, etc. So it's basically foreshadowing that it, I will put together a paper which could be considered. I think that would be very useful. It's certainly mm. something that I'm keen to progress is those meetings that are later in the day, particularly accessibility for our um, for people who work full time so that they can maybe leave work a little bit early and, and come to our council meetings. So um, I, the one of the reasons we haven't um, progressed that yet is because this is a very draft calendar so far, and whether those evening meetings would be the proposed subcommittees which are going to come to the next meeting or whether they'd be full council. So it's, it's all up for discussion. I think what's useful about passing this draft calendar today is for starters it gives people a bit of a, a forward planning for community board meetings, particularly as regards um, people's applications for funding to those to those boards and then a little bit of an idea about what, as you say, what's gonna happen up until Christmas. So so um, we'll pass this as a draft today, but very much mindful that um, it's going to probably change significantly in the not too distant future. So thank you for this report. Um, I'll now put that to the vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Against, that's carried. Bear with me a little bit today. I haven't managed to get into the hub yet, so I'm just scrolling rather than highlighting and jumping to things. So we now have 11.3, appointment of councillors to joint committees and external organisations for the 2022-25 triennium. And I welcome to the table Janice McDougall, Group Manager, People and Partnerships. Thank you, um, Your Worship, through you, um, Morena Koto. Uh, I just want to flag that in relation to this paper, there has been an error that Steffi, a minor um, error that Steffi will cover as she speaks to this report. Um, through you, Madam Chair, again, <laughs> me again. Um, so this report um, sees Council's approval to appoint councillors to joint committees and external organisations. Um, in the recommendations, these are just recommendations, so obviously there will be a discussion around whether changes need to be made. I am aware that there were discussions had, um, and we do have a new list in front of us so that that, that can be discussed. I um, just wanted to point out, as Janice said, there was an error in the report um, for the Paraparumu College Sports Hall. Um, it is not actually a share in ownership that council has as such, it's a share in maintenance costs only. So that's for you to consider. Um, in terms of the recommendation, the first recommendation is in terms of the campus state um, subcommittee, and that is actually covered in the will of the late Sydney George Camp. 
so there is not as much wiggle room there whereas with the rest it is up to you to decide um, who you would like to appoint um, normally these appointments are for a three year term however you could decide to change those appointments at any point in time through a uh, report to council and new um, new resolutions made by council um, I would also like to point out that we have attached a policy to this report um, around appointments to council organisations um, for directorships. There are, so as far as we are aware, no directorships in this list. However, there would be a policy that, as part of this report that we have, and we wanted to draw your attention to that if that were to change. So it has been brought to council. We would bring that to council again if there were an appointment to one of those organisations. Um, yeah, any questions so far? Do you have any questions? Councillor Spires. Thank you. Um, just wondering, with the Road Safety Advisory Group, that meeting has not happened for quite some time, and I used to attend them. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some burning issues out there around road safety, especially around schools and Greater Wellington Regional Council are going to be reviewing their bus routes and I think as a council we should front foot that. So I'm just wondering where are we at with the Road Safety Advisory Group? We've got a timeline on when it will be reinstated. Oh. We're just trying to figure out Mr. who will answer that question. Do you have an answer to that question? <laughs> <laughs> we have a few uh, people wanting to answer yeah, that yeah. question. <laughs> there, might, there might be a, a, a combination uh, oh. approach to the uh... Good morning, Madam Mayor. Good Thank morning, you Mr. Mellon. Thank you for the opportunity to respond to that question, and good morning to all of the elected members here today. Um, so there, yeah, there are two issues there. The, if there are, uh, certainly if there are existing or concerns around safety, road safety, any of those issues, then people should actually, they should raise those directly with... Um, with council, either through uh, Antenna or through service request uh, council, or I, I know in a lot of cases um, come directly through to uh, the accident transport manager, Glenn, or if not Glenn, directly to me if you've got a, an issue at the moment that you consider to be a serious, you know, safety issue. The committee itself, as, as, as was noted, it was, it was reviewed last triennium. Um, we haven't had a meeting for some time. There was a couple of follow-up sessions where we provided feedback back to the members of the committee. We had a workshop, and it's being included, I think, as part of the wider. There's a review um, going on uh, with regard to all of those um, subcommittees and what they look like and their terms of reference and um, other issues that is being undertaken uh, within Janice's area. So she might be able to give an update in terms of timing. But in the interim, if you do have a safety issue, absolutely 100%. Let me know, log it directly with um, the council system uh, if there's something out there you need responding to. I can give an update in terms of timing. Um, the, it is our intention to bring a paper to council and March seeking your approval for terms of reference for a review of our existing advisory group arrangements for the council. Um, and that is something that we intend to engage with all of the advisory groups on um, between now and when that paper comes to you. Yeah, certainly the the role of advisory groups and the the role they play is something that I'm really keen to progress as mayor um, as quickly as possible, as um, the councillors who've been involved in our um, delegations and governance structure conversations will be aware. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Don't have to. Uh, I, I don't, Your Worship. I have um, confidence in the um, in the staff that the review will take place and will find a. Um, a suitable solution. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. So, um, are there any more questions? I had a couple of just things I wanted to clarify. So, the Wellington Regional Waste Forum, there's a uh, Councillor Bavanoff, and we we added in Councillor Halliday as well. Um, just wanting to confirm that we're able to have two councillors appointed to those groups. Otherwise, we should probably put and slash or, and just leave it a little bit open, and I wanted to know if that was, so, yeah. I'm just having a look for the answer to that question.
while that's happening, I'll just point out that we discussed these as councillors and uh, we've tried to divvy things up as fairly as we can and so that people are performing roles which play to their strengths and their interests and um, that conversation's gone really well. So um, we'll be deciding on these today, but those um, the delegations that are usually decided at this meeting will be decided on the 23rd of November. We're refreshing a bit of the structure and um, just still discussing what roles people are going to play So and the, de and the delegations of the different committees that are being set up. So that work is underway and that paper will come now to the meeting at the end of November rather than this meeting. Just an explanation for those who are accustomed to those committees being established at this first meeting, well, second meeting of council, that will happen later this month. Um, we will have to double check the terms of reference for that group. So we would recommend putting in an and or or, so okay. and slash or into the wording so we can then come back to you and advise that. Yes. Very good. So a, an updated table has been circulated and tabled today. So everybody's had a chance to look at that. And it's on the screen right now. So we have no further questions, I don't think. So we have recommendation three. Madam Chair. Oh, <coughs> Sorry. Councillor Halliday. Yeah. Thank you. Look, I, I just wanted to um, bring up the uh, Capital Ecological Restoration Maintenance Trust. Um, we had Councillor Pavanov down on there initially. Um, when we talked it through, um, I was under the impression that um, there were just the two Parapara Umu spaces in there, but I do notice in the report that it says there's the Waikanae River Corridor um, as well, which I would consider to be more significant uh, part of that process, but I don't know much about that committee, and perhaps Councillor Pavanov does. I don't know. Um, or perhaps you want to do an and or on that one as well with Councillor Pavanov. The cup of the Ecological Restoration Mint. Maintenance uh, trust, yes. is that the one you're referring to? Are you happy with that, Councillor Bavanoff and Andor? Um, yes, Mayor. Okay, so that's also Councillor Halliday and or Councillor Bavanoff. With that change, do I have a mover and a seconder for three A and B on page 26? Councillor Coford, seconded by Councillor Wilson. Any further comments? Okay, I'll put that to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against. That's carried. We now have item 11.4, appointment of ward councillors to community boards. Through you again, Madam Chair. Um, so this report seeks to... Um, Council's approval for a formal appointment of war councillors back to the community boards. And so during and during 2021, there was a representation review that has taken place. And as a result, there are now five community boards and the local government commission is quite clear in their determination around how many ward councillors should be appointed back. We note that we have gotten legal advice and um, so the arrangement will be that there will be one ward council appointed back to the Otaki Community Board, which will be Councillor Shelley Warwick. Um, there will be one council appointed back to the Raumati right. Community Board. That's the discussion the next one. At the Raumati? Okay. Yeah, so, so just say the numbers of people, not who. Cool, okay. Because that's not part of the legal advice. Cool, okay. Yes, I can do that. So um, the Otaki Community Board will be one uh, one ward councillor appointed back, the Waikanae Community board, board once again, one ward councillor appointed back, and the legal advice is that it, m that the local government um, commission must set the membership of all of those um, appointments back to the community boards. So for Para Para Umu, it will be two of the ward councillors out of the three appointed back, and for Raumati and Paikakariki, it is one ward councillor appointed back. So, 
any questions or any any regards questions to that? on that? Are there are no I, questions. I have a question. I just want to clarify that is, it is the decision of this council as to who is appointed. So yes, we can that's right. That. Yeah, absolutely. So the council decides on the appointment back to the to yeah. the community boards. So I'm actually going to take these um, separately. So um, I'll ask for a mover. Actually, I'll yeah, yeah. I'll take them separately. So we're looking at four A one, the Autaki Community Board. Um, I'm going to ask for um, a nomination from the table, rather than the list because that list is a little bit out of date. So do I have a nominator for Councillor Shelley Warwick for the Autaki Community Board? I'll note that this is pretty much a done deal. So I think Councillor Wilson, seconded by Councillor Spires. <laughs> you, you feel free. If, if, if you want to do that, you can do that now. <laughs> I would just like to say that I think Shelley Warwick will be an excellent ward councillor on the Autaki Community Board, already bringing significant experience on the Community Board. And um, I'd just like to add that we have an excellent um, Autaki Community Board who've been elected, and thanks to everybody who put their hands up. So with that, um, I'll put that to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? That's carried. So do I have somebody nominating a councillor to the Waikanae Community Board? Um, I would like to... Hang on. Yeah, hang on. All right. All right, fine. Uh, I would like to nominate Nigel Wilson for uh, this role. Jocelyn, I... I I know you have given a great service to the to the community board, Waikanae Community Board, uh, over a long period of years, and the fact that you've been elected again. Uh, oh, hang on, to that. before before we have debate, I'll need a seconder. Do I have a seconder for that nomination? I'm happy to second. Right. Yep. Uh, would you like me to continue? Yeah, continue. Um, yes, I I guess my feeling is that uh, we need to, as far as possible, bring in good governance principles to the council and part of good governance is having uh, some rotation of uh, contribution to various roles and uh, for that reason alone uh, I, I believe it's timely for a change of input into that community board. It's, it speaks nothing about your contribution or um, you know uh, how well you could perform in that role, but simply that, in my view, uh, it's good practice to have a change after such a period of time. Uh, and so that would be my recommendation that we have an al alternative uh, person for that role. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coe. I have Councillor Halliday. I'm assuming we're in debate. Yeah. Yep. Uh, look, I just wanted to recognise um, Jocelyn's efforts in the Waikanae Community Board over a very long period of time. Um, I'm in a similar situation with regard to Jocelyn, uh, having been only a first-term uh, member of the Paraparauma Community Board, but I'm very much looking forward to working with Jocelyn on other projects with, that we can put more time into with regards to the environment um, and um, other aspects that I know Jocelyn's very, very passionate about, and so am I. Um, so I'll certainly be supporting um, that recommendation, and I certainly look forward to working with Jocelyn uh, and uh, in the other areas that she's been appointed to uh, moving forward. Do you have any other comments? Yes. Councillor Pravanov. Thank you. Um, so I'm actually just going to follow up on the email that I sent um, the Mayor, the CE and, the, and um, Tim Power this morning. So I suppose um, to me this, pro you know, we've talked about going forward in an open um, manner and um, I don't think this has worked particularly well. So on Tuesday um, I had to attend a funeral and this decision was made without any input from me and yesterday I had to actually seek um, where that had landed rather than someone had come to me. Um, and I suppose the reason I'm bringing this forward is because um, um, I'm looking at um, who I'm representing and this is the Waikanae community. And I suppose the other thing too that I'm actually really um, uneasy about is that 
if um, there's two parts to this. The first part is that um, it is not clear of the role of the person of the of a ward councillor, which applies to councillor Halliday as well, if he is not actually um, appointed back to the um, Parapara and Community Board, what that role actually is, whether they sit at the t council table, whether they have voting or whether they don't, or whether they basically sit in the public gallery and sit and watch proceedings. So that is not clear, and that needs to be clarified before any of these decisions are made in relation to um, deciding um, less than all of the ward councillors who are part of that community board. Now, also too, I note in the paper um, that um, the recommendation is to um, um, a, a, appoint the list to whatever that, that might be, and that um, it says that this will, um, these appointments will apply until the next um, representation, representation review. In um, paragraph 15, it states that these appointments can be changed, um, but so that there is confusing and is not actually part of the main recommendation. So um, it, it sounds like everything's a little bit muddled. Um, and so it's either talking about um, either the, it, it can be changed by various means. Um, so the other thing too is as a non-legal person, I've looked into the, <coughs> the um, decision made by the representation review. And when you go through all the, the loops, the ins and outs, um, at the end of the day, it seems to me that the um, commission has made um, the decision based on the recommendation by this council, which stated that there was going to be one ward councillor for Waikanae and two for Paraparama. So they've basically just rolled that over and they haven't taken into account the decision that they made to increase the number of ward councillors for both Waikanae and Paraparam. Now, um, when you actually keep on wandering through, um, one of the key um, points here is that 19.2 um, uh, um, uh, J then says, it says, hold on, um, it's all very confusing this here. No, it's not that there. Yeah, so <coughs> 19J3 states, when it, it talks about these, that nothing in this section limits the provisions of section 19.F. And what that basically says is that it is up to this council to make the decision of who is appointed back to those community boards and there is no limitation as to how many of those councillors actually are. So... What I actually am suggesting is that all um, ward councillors are um, appointed back to all community boards rather than, um, and, and you know, in terms of the voting and how all that works out, you know, that's fine because, you know, without um, being part of it, you can't actually work particularly effectively, I don't believe. So what I actually did is I asked for this, for these two um, um, ward positions, um, for Waikanae and for Paraparamu to be laid on the table until there was a little bit more clarity, a little bit more thought that has actually been thought about that. And so I'm now asking that, that this matter is not decided today and more thought is thought about it. Thank you. So um, w we've, we've had some legal advice, which is quite clear today and having taken part in the Local Government Commission um, hearings, I know that they made the decision around the numbers of councillors appointed back to community boards. As far as I'm concerned, we've had the legal response to that. Um, so that's, that's, that's what we, that's, that's the advice we have on the table today from our staff. And so, I, that's what, that's what we'll base our decision on today. So I just want to clarify in, in response to the other question that you kind of had around the report. We can bring back delegations to the table at any time. If we had legal advice that we could have a second ward councillor, we could bring back a paper to delegate a second ward councillor onto the community board any time. And if we wanted to change 
who was on the community board, we could bring back a paper any time. It's not set for three years. Um, the paper might be a little bit misleading in one of the paragraphs around that. So I just wanted to reassure councillors that that's, as not said, none of the delegations that we're setting are set in stone. We can we can adjust them at any time. If somebody decided they weren't enjoying enjoying their role on the community board, they could say, this isn't for me. We bring back another paper and we could appoint another ward councillor. It can, however, only be <clears throat> a ward councillor from that ward. It can't be a district-wide councillor or another ward councillor or anything like that. There are, there are strict limitations in terms of the delegations. Um, also, I just wanted to make a comment around the lack of clarity around people who are allowed to sit around community board tables. The community board can have anybody sitting at the table that they want to. So um, I would hope that the community boards wouldn't leave their ward councillors languishing in the public gallery unable to speak, as I have been in the past at the Paraparumuramati community board many years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I think with the, with the community boards we have, I would, I would hope that ward councillors would have a place at that, at, at, at the community board table, but that's only my hope. Um, how those meetings are run are completely at the discretion of the chair. So, um, yeah, I, I would hope that um, all community board members and all ward councillors will um, have a meaningful role to play within the actions of the community board. All we're doing today is um, delegating that set ward councillor that's being dictated by the local government commission onto the community board and we have to we have to choose one council one ward councillor for that so um, I'm going to move on with debate can I, um, have, you, uh, can I have responses please um, I will allow that councillor Pravanov but Thank you. in general when we debate we only speak once with a right of reply of the mover but I'll make I'll make an exception this time Thank you. So um, even though the councillors for the, the, the Paraparamu Community Board um, have not been appointed at this meeting, they're actually already listed on the website. And in those standing orders, there's absolutely no mention about um, this floating third councillor. And I would have thought that that was a key place to include it in those st community board standing orders. So it either means that they have been forgotten about or they are excluded from sitting around that table. That's my first point. Well, the delegations haven't been made yet. So, so one other point, and then I'm going to move on to Councillor yeah. Warwick. Yeah, my other point is that I would like to, to seek a second opinion, legal opinion, please. Can I ask, request okay. that I do the Mayor? Yeah, that's noted. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Warwick? Sorry. Mine's a question. Am I allowed to do a question? So the board can can decide that the floating councillor has speaking and voting rights on their own board. It says in number 13 uh, that the full members have speaking and voting rights, but if the board can decide their own way forward, they could delegate that speaking and voting right to a floating... Not a voting right, no. But a speaking right, yes. Um, Councillor Halliday? Um, through you, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I must have been a little bit concerned about that as well, uh, with regards to I would have made an assumption that I'd be invited to the table to sit. Um, I appreciate that I will not have voting rights um, as per the legislation, um, but um, it would be opportune, I would think, to ensure that the other councillor has the ability to at least sit at the table, because I think there would be nothing worse than that not being allowed by the community board with regards to relationships. Um, as such, I respect the lack of voting rights. I have no issue with that. Um, but um, I think the ward councillor should be able to sit at that table if they so wish. Noted. Councillor Wilson? Yeah, actually, uh, given that nobody asked me if I wanted to be nominated, <laughs> uh, but yes, I'm happy to be nominated. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of things. Uh, the, the legislation around this is, I think, really clear. And I've spent a bit of time studying it myself. Um, there, I, I think one of the cautionary notes about 
uh, reporting back, having all of the councillors back on those boards, is it then creates a disproportionate imbalance on the boards. The boards themselves, um, comprising just four members, if, if, say, for instance, in the Paraparumu situation where you had three councillors there, uh, and, and the whole point is being about empowering community boards, and that actually is almost disempowering community boards. So that was part of the reason for that. The other reason I was, um, I'm okay to accept the nomination for this is I know in the delegations, um, Jocelyn's workload is all really, all really very heavy with five of those and, and a community uh, and a, uh, and a uh, committee chair, whereas I note the council has used my skills somewhat sparingly um, with just the one. Um, I'm not taking that as a personal affront. I just obviously you want me to concentrate my skills in that particular area. So, um, yeah, I'm okay with this. Yeah, we, we have we have some delegations yet to yet to yet to a point, but yes, yeah. So, uh, any other debate? Right of reply. Right of reply, Councillor Co. Oh. <laughs> Waved. Okay, so I'll put that to the vote. All, all in favour, please. That Councillor Wilson is uh, appointed to the Waikanae Community Board. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? Yes, okay, uh, we've called for a division. Here's a test, Mr Edwards. <laughs> can you read the name? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe somebody else can do it just for today. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Ms McDougall's going to read, going okay. to read the division. So are we starting with four? So uh, all in favour, please raise your, ha raise your hands. Councillor Cooper, Councillor Spears, Spires, Councillor Kirby, the Mayor, Councillor Coe, Councillor Halliday, Councillor Wilson, Councillor, sorry, Councillor Warwick, Councillor Coford. Against? Oh, oh, sorry, and Councillor Hanford online. Oh, I'm doing a really great job of modelling this for the new boss, aren't I? <laughs> uh, and those against? Councillor Pravanov. That's carried. So we now move on to 4A number three, the Paraparomu Community Board. Do I have a call for two nominees for this board? Councillor Wilson. Uh, yes, I'm happy to nominate uh, Councillor Cathy Spears and Councillor Glenn Cooper. Do I have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Coe. Uh, do I have any comments around this? There being no debate, I'll put that... Oh, Councillor Halliday. Oh, I'll just do debate, um, do debate, if you like. Yes, it's debate now. Oh, sure. uh, look, I just want to say I support their recommendation. Um, I'm uh, looking forward to working in some of the other committees as well, uh, but we'll certainly be attending the uh, co community board. And I have an expectation, fellas, that I'll have an invitation at the table, not putting <laughs> any pressure on or anything like that at all. Um, but look forward to working with my new fellow um, councillors in uh, the Paraparaumu Parapara only space. Very good. So I'll put that to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. 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 Against? That's carried. So I'll take uh, for a number four. It should be an IV. Um, the Ramaji Community Board... Uh, and actually, I'll take the next two because um, because there's only one possible nominee. Uh, Councillor Hanford has the uh, incredible privilege of being, I'm guessing, one of the only councillors in the country who must be delegated to two community boards. But um, she's kind of made her bed because she suggested that I'm at a community board in the first place. <laughs> So th there's an Italian saying, you buy a bicycle, now you've got to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I'll call for somebody to move, move that uh, Councillor Hanford is appointed to the Ramati and Paikakareka Community Boards. Councillor Wilson, seconded. Councillor Warwick. Um, do I have any further comments around this? We're now in debate. There being none, I'll put that to the vote. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? That's carried. 
So thus ends the first stage of our delegations. And we'll look forward to the next round later this month. We now have item 12, confirmation of minutes on page 66. There are none. There being none, we shall move on to uh, there's no public excluded reports today either. Uh, do we have any public speakers who wish to speak, even though that's not on the agenda? It should be. Oh, there is public speaking time there. It's just not on the on the cover cover note. So we have public speaking time covering items not on the agenda. Does anybody wish to speak? We have no takers. So there are no responses, and we have nothing under 14 and 15. So that, that brings this council meeting to a close. Thank you very much for your attendance. <laughs>